Hi there everyone. In this video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about choosing high performance carbon fiber for FPV drone applications. I'm also going to be sharing with you a project I've been working on called AOS Arm Carbon, a special layup of carbon fiber that's about 20% stiffer and stronger than standard layup, specifically for quadcopter arm applications. There's no time to waste, so let's get into it. So what is CFRP? Well, CFRP is the engineering name for the composite material that we informally refer to as carbon fiber. It's composed of a polymer or plastic matrix reinforced with carbon fibers. And the matrix that's typically used is epoxy resin. Now, you might be more familiar with epoxy resin as a glue, like araldite, for example, or it's also used in these kind of art projects where people fill in natural timber with epoxy resin to create tables and things like that. It's the same stuff and there are lots of different grades. The carbon fibers are incredibly strong and stiff fibers and that's what gives CFRP its strength and stiffness. There are three key aspects to CFRP, which define its quality and performance for a specific application. The first is the matrix that's used. There are lots of different grades of resin that have different strengths, stiffnesses, toughness, and adhesion to the carbon fibers. And in general, the more performant grades of resin are more expensive. The type of carbon fiber that's used makes a huge difference because it's the carbon fiber that's providing all the strength and the stiffness in the final composite material. And the third aspect is the layup, which is how the fibers are orientated within the part. In a good layup, the fibers are well aligned with the applied forces and carry the majority of the load. Let's start by talking about the matrix. In most CFRP available today, the matrix is an epoxy resin and epoxy resins are relatively stiff, strong, and adhere very well to carbon fibers. However, there are a multitude of different grades of epoxy resin, and high quality epoxy resins are strong, but still somewhat flexible. They're extremely tough and resistant to damage from impact, and they also bond very, very strongly to the fibers. Cheaper resins are weaker and more brittle and adhere less well to the fibers and overall are gonna give you a lower quality CFRP material. Typically, the higher quality resins are more expensive because of the time that goes into developing them and the various additives that are used to improve their properties. Now, the properties of the final CFRP composite depend a lot on the properties of the fibers used. And there are many different grades of fibers available from lots of different manufacturers. They all have slightly different chemical compositions, additives, and manufacturing processes, and these all yield different performance. What I have here is a graph of the carbon fiber properties from one manufacturer called Torre, which is a, they're a reputable manufacturer, and in fact, the largest manufacturer of carbon fibers worldwide. Let's look at the different carbon fiber grades produced by Torre in a bit more detail. You can see that on this plot, we have the stiffness of the fiber or tensile modulus on the X axis and the tensile strength of the fiber on the Y axis. So as we go to the right, the fibers get stiffer. And as we go upwards, the fibers get stronger. There are three broad categories of fibers. Standard modulus fibers shown in this orange bubble provide a good balance of performance and cost for most applications. The green bubble represents intermediate modulus fibers. These are stiffer and stronger than standard modulus, providing better performance, but they're also much more expensive. This purple bubble represents high modulus fibers. These are very stiff, but they're also brittle and not particularly strong, and therefore the overall material will be less durable. So we have to ask, what grade is best? Well, I think that it comes down to a balance between performance and cost. Some of these grades up here, T800, T1000, T1100, are definitely much higher performance than a grade like T300, but they're also enormously more expensive. I think that T300 gives a good price to performance ratio for FPV 
it's relatively inexpensive and it's both stiff and strong. If we look at something like T700, T700 is a stronger fibre but it's not any stiffer. And that means that you might get a bit more durability in a crash with T700 but you're not going to get any more vibration or resonance performance in flight and you're paying 30 to 40 percent more for the fiber compared to T300. Something like T800 is an intermediate modulus fiber that's even higher performance. It's both stiffer and stronger than T700 or T300 but it is even more expensive. It's 30 to 40 percent more expensive than T700. High modulus fibers like these M series fibers from Torre are a lot more stiff than some of the lower grade fibers but they are a lot less durable as a result because that high stiffness combined with relatively modest strength makes them brittle. If you remember when Armitan did the Marmot with the space grade carbon that was probably a high modulus fiber and it flew amazingly well. The resonance performance was very very good because the material was so stiff but the durability was a bit of a concern there because that very stiff material is brittle and therefore it's easier to break it. Now that you understand about the different grades of carbon fibre, please let me know down in the comments whether you would be willing to pay more for a drone frame that's made with T700 or T800 carbon fibre as opposed to the standard T300. If there's a lot of interest in this, it might be something that I can offer on my AOS frames as an option in the future. The layup process is probably the least spoken about contributor to the overall performance of the CFRP. It determines several key properties, the volume fraction of carbon fiber compared to resin, the appearance of the final finished carbon fiber, and the directions of the carbon fibers within the CFRP. And those directions are super important for controlling the overall performance of the material. Volume fraction is one of the key parameters that separates good CFRP from cheap CFRP. High grade CFRP is at least 60% carbon fibres by volume and less than 40% resin. And this ratio 60-40 gives the best mechanical properties because there is just enough resin to wet all the fibres and bind them together really tightly but not more resin than is needed because the resin itself is much weaker than the carbon fibers. So if given the choice, you'd rather have more carbon fiber and less resin. These graphs show the effect of varying the volume fraction of carbon fibers. You can see that at low volume fractions, so 40% carbon fiber, you end up with a material that can't withstand very much load at a certain displacement. It's more flexible. And as you increase that ratio of carbon fibers, the material gets stiffer. And also you see on this stress strain graph much stronger as well. That trend increases up to about 70, 30. But then once you get above that ratio to 80% carbon fibers, you no longer have enough resin to wet all the fibers and hold them together. And the result is the material loses all of its structural strength and just becomes very weak and very flexible. Because of manufacturing process controls, having a target of at least 60% is a good compromise where you get very nearly the maximum possible performance, but you're not at risk of not putting enough resin in and ending up with a material that's much weaker than you expect it to be. It's worth pointing out that the carbon fibers themselves are very much more expensive than the resin. So cheaper, low quality carbon fiber simply has less carbon fiber in it and more resin. You can't really tell by looking at the material, but its performance will be much, much worse. The layup pattern also determines what the outer layers of the CFRP material are going to be. Now the bulk of carbon fiber or CFRP plate is usually made from layers of unidirectional carbon fiber or 090 ply. However, the outer layer on the sheet on either side is almost always a woven fabric and that's mainly for cosmetic reasons. You can get different weaves, a plain weave, a twill weave, and you can even have a forged carbon finish, which is I think what's used on the Stingy V2 forged carbon. It's worth noting here that these are cosmetic. 
they don't actually really impart any particular performance to the material because it's a very, very thin outer layer. It's what's inside that counts. You might hear 1K, 3K, 6K and 12K carbon fiber. This refers to the weave of the outer cosmetic layers only and has a negligible effect on the performance of the material. Larger numbers indicate more strands per weave and therefore a bigger weave. 3K is typically the most common. You can see that 1K has a sort of smaller pattern and 12K a larger pattern. But in terms of performance, these are all pretty much identical. CFRP plate is typically made by laying up the carbon fiber fabrics by hand one layer at a time on a big sheet of glass or something like that. This is quite a labor intensive process, but it does mean that you can have different fiber directions for each of those fabrics and have a variety of different fiber directions within a single plate of CFRP. Once the resin infusion process is finished, this whole assembly, the glass, the vacuum bag, the carbon fiber, all of it is put into an oven. And what that oven does is it cures the runny epoxy resin that has infused through the fabric and turns effectively a wet stack of fabric into a solid piece of CFRP plate. And there are some common layup processes that you should be aware of. The main one is what's called standard layup. This has 50% of the fibers aligned with the zero degree direction and 50% of the fibers aligned with the 90 degree direction. And it's typically made by taking unidirectional sheets of carbon fiber where all the fibers are running in the same direction and laying a sheet in the zero degree direction, a sheet in 90, zero, 90, zero, 90, and so on to build up the carbon fiber. You can also stack woven fabrics where each layer has 50% of the fibers in the zero degree direction and 50% in the 90 degree direction. And this is what a typical woven fabric might look like where you've got 50, 50, zero and 90. Standard layup has good strength and stiffness in the directions aligned with the fibers. So the zero degree direction and the 90 degree direction. It's got a little bit less strength and stiffness in the 45 degree directions. Quasi isotropic layup has 25% of the fibers aligned in the 0, 90, 45 and minus 45 degree directions respectively. And the aim with this layup is to achieve as uniform strength and stiffness across the plate as possible. Now the way this is done again can be made by stacking unidirectional ply 0, 90, 45, minus 45 and so on. This can also be achieved using 0, 90 fabrics by having one fabric aligned with the zero direction, the next with 45, the next with zero, the next 45, and so on. Now, quasi-isotropic layer has a more uniform strength and stiffness in all directions, but it is less strong than standard layer in the zero and 90 degree directions. I'd like to take a moment to give you a bit of a warning about CFRP quality. The CFRP used in cheap clone frames is cheap. And here are the ways that unscrupulous manufacturers cut costs at your expense. So the first cheap trick, cheap trick number one, is to just use carbon fibers on the outside layers and use cheaper glass fiber for the inner layers. Glass fibers are useless compared to carbon fiber in terms of strength and stiffness. But if it's well hidden, then you, the customer, might not notice. Second cheap trick, Cheap trick number two, don't use engineering grade carbon fibers from a reputable manufacturer like Torre or Hexel or Mitsubishi. Instead, use a cheaper cosmetic grade carbon fiber that's much, much weaker, much less stiff, but still looks like carbon fiber and just hope no one notices. And cheap trick number three, carbon fibers are really expensive, but epoxy resin is really cheap. So just use less carbon fiber and make up the difference with resin. This will create a softer, weaker composite, but no one will really be able to tell. It will still look like carbon fiber, right? And I've kind of ordered these in order of sneakiness because this first cheap trick is relatively easy to notice because glass fibers look a bit different than carbon fibers. But 
Cheap trick number two and number three are basically impossible to detect unless you actually do tensile testing on the carbon fiber parts itself. Here are some images I found online of cheap trick number three. Um, it turns out that air is even cheaper than resin. And so in a cheap carbon fiber, you can see that it's basically just all resin with some air pockets. And there's very little carbon fiber actually in the CFRP plate. You've got these pinholes and voids, which are really bad. And you've got large areas, which are just pure resin. Also, if you look at the weave of the carbon fiber, you can see that the, it's quite an open weave and that there are gaps in it. This is going to be filled with resin or with air, and that's going to make the carbon fiber cheaper to make, but also a lot less performant. Now that we've covered the layup process, I'm excited to talk to you about an optimized layup that I've developed specifically for quadcopter arms called AOS Arm Carbon. So it turns out that none of the standard layups that you can buy, standard layup and quasi, neither of them, are ideal for quadcopter arms. As part of my resonance analysis work, I actually created a tool for simulating the performance of different carbon fiber layups so that I could accurately model the performance of the carbon fiber when looking at resonance performance. It turned out that this tool that I developed can actually easily be used to optimize carbon fiber layups for a particular loading case. So you can kind of do the same process in reverse. I decided to optimize the layup of carbon fiber plate for a quadcopter arm specifically, for the load case of a quadcopter arm. And I've created what I call AOS arm carbon. AOS arm carbon is about 20% stiffer than standard layup and 30% stiffer than quasi-isotropic layup. When looking at the load cases for individual traditional quadcopter arms and other similar applications only. Now, the way this performance is achieved is by adjusting the fiber directions within the layup to reduce the amount of reinforcement that we have in directions where it adds no value and reorientate these underutilized fibers into more useful directions to provide increased strength, increased stiffness and better performance for traditional quadcopter arms. Now, when I say that, what I mean is arm carbon works well for these type of arms, long and straight, and doesn't work at all well for a unibody design where all of the arms are in different directions. You have to align the arms with the direction of the fibers in the plate, and you can't do that if they're all coming off at different angles. If you look at the chart in the top right, you can see the effects of using AOS arm carbon on a traditional quadcopter frame. This is an iFlight XL5 frame. AOS arm carbon increases the resonant frequency of all of the first five resonant modes compared to quasi-isotropic or standard layup. And this significant increase in the resonant frequency shows that the arm is stiffer and it should also be stronger than an arm made of a standard layer or quasi-isotropic. And the purpose of trying to push these resonant frequencies higher is to allow you to raise your filter cutoffs and benefit from reducing the amount of delay on your gyro signal caused by filtering. And hopefully that will help your quad feel a bit more locked in. As far as I know, lots of people have talked about this, but it's never been properly put into manufacture for FPV. I have a supply chain set up for this material, and I'm going to put a poll on my community page to determine the most popular thicknesses that you want to use for your quadcopter arms. I will buy the most popular thicknesses for Nick to stock at CNC Madness, and you will be able to order parts made of AOS arm carbon from there. The material cost is about 25% more than a standard layup, due to the extra manufacturing complexity of carefully orientating all these fiber layers. I'm also happy to discuss bulk orders of material, but I want you to be aware that a single sheet is about 200 US dollars plus shipping, depending on the thickness. And this isn't that much more expensive than normal carbon fiber, but it is quite a lot more expensive than like a quadcopter frame, for example. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you feel like the engineering work that I've done on carbon fiber 
is going to be valuable for you and others in the FPV community. If you like the work that I do and would like to support future projects like this, I do have a Patreon. Patrons get access to my Discord server and they also get access to some sneak peeks on future projects that I'm working on. The most recent one is an X8 Cinelifter. So if that piques your interest, I'll put a link down in the video description and I'd really appreciate if you'd consider checking it out. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.